Fast cars are Matthias Müller's passion. Whenever Porsche enters a car in a race, there's a good chance he'll be there. Whether it's at the 24 Hours of Le Mans or here with a hybrid car at the Nürburgring. And Müller loves to win. But now that he's been named Volkswagen's new CEO, he's unlikely to be putting in many appearances at the track. That's because Miller is assuming control of a car company in crisis. He's been with Volkswagen for close to four decades, working his way up from apprentice all the way to CEO. Will the top job be his crowning achievement? Or is he sitting in the ejector seat? Personally, I will do everything I can to win back the trust of our clients and employees, our partners, investors, and the general public. Müller says he wants to get to the bottom of the emissions cheating scandal and polish VW's tarnished image. But that won't be easy. It will mean recalling at least 11 million vehicles worldwide and modifying them so that they meet appropriate emissions standards. Still, industry expert Stefan Bratzel thinks Müller is the right man for the job. The supervisory board must have been sure about him and certainly must have checked whether Mr. Müller was in any way involved in this affair. And he appears not to be. Above all, he has the experience necessary to reposition Volkswagen. He knows the company and its shortcomings too. The scandal has also revealed serious problems in VW's management culture. Under former CEO Martin Winterkorn, all important decisions were made in Wolfsburg with its entrenched hierarchies. That's something Müller needs to change as he takes the wheel. Es kann nicht sein, dass ja eine Kultur der Angst. There mustn't be a culture of fear in which no one dares to inform their superiors about potential problems. They also need to discuss whether the pressure to win back market share in the U.S. was simply too great. Do diesel cars have a future in the U.S.? Here, Volkswagen Group faces fines and lawsuits amounting to billions of dollars. Around half a million of the affected cars were sold in the U.S., including ones from premium brand Audi. Even before the scandal broke, Volkswagen sales were falling. In July, U.S. sales of VWs were down 2% compared to the previous year. In Russia, sales had fallen by more than 44%. And in China, car sales dropped by close to 8%. The Chinese market is extremely important for Volkswagen, accounting for one-third of its sales. So if that market has a problem, then VW has an even bigger one. They know that. They'll need to watch that market very carefully and then quickly take measures to react. That's another task for Mr. Müller. In the long run, Müller will have to get Volkswagen fit to build the cars of tomorrow. Production costs for its core brand, VW, are too high, yet half the vehicles it makes are VWs. Low profit margins are common in the auto industry. Toyota makes over 1,600 euros from each vehicle it sells, Skoda over 1,000. GM's profit is just under 800 euros and Ford's above 600. Volkswagen's is lowest at over 500 euros per car. They'll have to introduce more electric cars into their vehicle fleet. That's a big project. And last but not least, Volkswagen must transform itself from a maker of hardware into a mobility services provider. Here the concepts of connectivity and autonomous driving will play an important role. Matthias Müller has lots of work ahead to clean up Martin Winterkorn's dirty diesel legacy.